Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add some jiggle physics to your weapons on your back so they don't look super stiff. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is head over to your weapon skeletal mesh, right click, create physics asset, and I'm going to create an assign. And I'll just say yes here, just like that. And now that will fix our weapon. So when we go over to our weapon blueprint, double click on it, then in the details tab, while mesh is selected, you'll be able to search for physics and make sure that simulate physics is checked. If this is grayed out for you, then you probably do not have a physics asset assigned. So I'm going to hit compile and save. And now what I want to do is actually add two things. So one is going to be a static mesh. That's going to basically be where our object is going to start rotating around. And I'll call this something like um, rotator mesh. And I'll just unparent this to the mesh. But while this is selected, I'm going to add a physics constraint like so. And this is totally the name is totally fine. And now for the component name, I'm going to want to attach this static mesh over to this mesh. So my parent will be called so my component name one will be called rotator mesh. And the mesh that we're attaching to which is component name two is going to be just called mesh. Now when I go to the viewport, you'll see there is this blue box around my sword. So I'll hit compile and save. And I'm just going to attach a static mesh to this. And for this example, I'm just going to use a regular cube and it's way too big. So I just want to do something like 0 0.001 or 0 0.01, whatever the smallest you can do is. And I will just, this will just be inside my mesh. And I'm actually just going to place it around here. And this is pretty much where your sword will rotate from. So I can, I'll hit compile and save. And now while physics constraint is selected, scroll down and you'll see angular limits, which is pretty much just going to limit our how much it jiggles. So we'll do limited for the X for the swing one, two and twist. And we are actually going to change this to something like let's try 10, 10 and 20. It might be a little too much, but we can play around with these numbers and you can fit it to whatever your character desires. So you'll see this. So I'll hit compile and save. So now while the physics constraint is selected, I'm going to hit E to turn on my rotator. So if you don't know how to do that, you can hit W or E on your keyboard, or you can click on this part over here. And I'm just going to go down 90 degrees and I'm going to twist on the X 90 degrees as well. And now you'll see this line pointing downwards, this red line looking downwards. And now while the mesh is selected, we're going to go down and adjust the collision. So we're going to change the collision presets to custom and everything will be overlap and make sure that the collision enabled is just set to physics only. So I'll hit compile and save. And now we're going to select that rotator mesh. And then we are also going to select this collision over to custom. So change collision presets to custom and we'll change all of these to overlap just like that. And now when we hit play, we'll be able to see our sword jiggle and it might be jiggling a little too much in this case, but I'm going to go ahead and actually just lower the angular limits so you know how to adjust those. So when we go back over to our weapon blueprint, I am going to select physics constraint and set this to something like five, five and 10 just to see, I don't want it to jiggle too much. And now you'll see that it is pretty lively. It does move around. It actually does look pretty nice. And all I need to do in order to copy paste this to my other mesh is just open up that other mesh and I'm just going to right click copy and paste this under my second swords handle. And now when I move around, you'll see both of my weapons are pretty jiggling and I need to do the same thing for my bow and anything else that kind of shows. But just remember that whenever you do equip, your sword might still be jiggling. So we want to set simulate physics off. So as you can see, you can actually just leave this. This actually does look pretty good. So yeah, I think just limiting the angular limits makes it pretty realistic actually when it's in the hand. Uh, wow. Yeah, this, this actually looks really good. Let me actually just try that out. And so I'm just going to limit this to something like even a little less. So three, three, maybe something like seven. Hit compile and save. And of course, this is all just personal preference. And I'll do the same thing on my other weapon. Hit compile and save. And now when we run around, you'll see that it does move slightly. Maybe not as much as we'd like, but at least it does move and it does look pretty still. So now when I equip my weapon, 
then yeah, there is some liveliness to these weapons actually shaking as if they would in a normal hand. Forgot to add the test rag doll on. No. And now let's see what it looks like if I set it to something crazy high. So I'll just set it to max 180, 180, 180. And now when I hit play, and now when I hit play, my sword is spinning all around. Let's see what happens when I dodge roll. Yep, it's going in a spherical shape and going crazy. And yeah, that's pretty much how you play with the angular limits and setting the physics constraint on weapons in Ascent Combat Framework. Thanks for watching. Code of the Road. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.